Today we're out at the Marin Headlands. We're doing some experimental treatments to try to explore different ways of enhancing habitat for the federally endangered mission blue butterfly. My name is Bill Merkel. I'm a wildlife ecologist with the National Park Service at Golden Gate National Recreation Area. We're working with our network fire office today to implement some controlled burns and to test whether the burns are generating the host plants that the Mission Blue Butterfly depends on. We really wanted to make sure we were controlling the burns with very little chance for escape. And we came up with this idea of we would need to do the burns in these burn boxes. We couldn't just have fire lines and have more of what you would consider a prescribed fire. Fire and other forms of disturbance are important for these early successional plant communities, things like uh, grasslands. Lupin, the lupin host plants that the Mission Blue Butterfly depend on, they rely on disturbance to regenerate, for the seedlings to uh, germinate. These fire and disturbances can have beneficial impacts to some of these habitats and plant species, and even, we we're hoping, Mission Blue Butterflies. The Mission Blue Butterfly, it's a small butterfly. It's maybe about an inch or so big, maybe about the size of a quarter. The males have bright blue or purple on their back with a white edge to the wings. Females, the, the upper side is a little more brownish and with the edges tapering towards a little more bluish. So, so here we have the silverleaf lupin, Lupinus albifrons, and this is uh, one of the primary host plants for the Mission Blue Butterfly. This is where the adult butterflies will lay their eggs, the eggs hatch, caterpillars will feed for a period of a couple weeks, two to three weeks, and then they're going to go into this uh, diapause, which they're in right now, where they're essentially hibernating at the base of the plants in the, in the duff and leaf litter. After the winter, the, the caterpillars will re-emerge, they'll start feeding again for a period maybe of three or four weeks, and then they're going to pupate, um, they're going to essentially metamorphose into adult butterflies. And that flight season is going to last from March through probably late May, early June, and we start the cycle again. The butterflies are going to be laying eggs on these lupin host plants. The goal of our project here is to try to figure out um, whether different plot treatments are better for restoring habitat for mission blue butterflies. And so what we've done is in our four plots, we've divided them into three treatments. And here on this side, we have a control area which we're not treating. We come in and we sample the vegetation during the growing season so we know all the plants. We know how many lupin host plants are here for the butterflies. And we want to compare that to a couple different treatments. And in this plot, we're doing vegetation. We did vegetation clearing and we did some scraping with the hope that by removing those plants, we're removing some of the competition for the lupins and we're also creating the soil disturbance and potentially scarifying seeds that's going to cause the lupin to regenerate in this plot. Right here, we have our, our fire plots that we just burned in our, in our burn boxes. And again, the goal is to be able to come back and monitor and compare the results in terms of you know, how much lupin regrowth are we getting between the fire plot, the vegetation and scraping plot, and our control plot. If one of these seems more promising, we're hopeful to try it on, a, on perhaps a larger scale. By protecting the lupin host plants, you know, we are protecting the opportunity for the butterflies to persist. By enhancing the lupin, we're enhancing the butterfly populations.